today we are on the beautiful island of Casey Key. And unless you're from around here, there's a good chance that you've never even heard of it before. Yeah, and the multimillionaires who live on this island probably want to keep it that way. Yeah, Casey Key is not a huge tourist destination because it's primarily residential. Yeah, and if you're like us and can't afford a multi-million dollar home, that doesn't mean you still can't enjoy this amazing island. So in this video, we're going to show you how. Let's go. Welcome back to Exploration. We're Jamie and Skylar, and recently on this channel, we've been taking you to the very best of Florida's Gulf beaches. And today's destination may just be the most beautiful of them all. So stick around to see everything that this little known island has to offer. Located between Siesta Key to the north and Venice to the south, Casey Key is a charming beach town straight out of a postcard. With famous residents such as Stephen King and an average home list price of over $8 million, living on Casey Key is far out of reach for most. But a day trip to Casey Key likely is within reach for you, as parking on the island and access to the beach is absolutely free. We arrived on the island around 10 a.m. on a Saturday, and having not yet had any breakfast or coffee, we were so happy to find that the concession stand at the Nokomis Public Beach Access had both. I think we're gonna like this. It is huge. Eager to try our breakfast, we quickly made our way down the beachfront boardwalk to one of several covered picnic areas with an amazing gulf view. I like it. We just finished up our breakfast from the Shark Tooth concession stand and we were actually pretty impressed. For $14, we got a hash bowl, which included hash browns, eggs, steak, and even fresh pico de gallo. And we also got a locally roasted cold brew coffee. Yeah, and as far as we know, this is the only place on this whole beach that you can get food, so they could charge pretty much anything they want. So we were really happy to see that the menu prices were quite reasonable. And we thought the food and portion was good. But now that we have a little bit of energy, we're going to show you the beach. Located towards the south end of KC Key and just across the Albee Road drawbridge, Nokomis Beach is one of two public beaches on the island, and in our opinion, one of the most beautiful in all of Florida. If the beach near the public access is a bit too busy for your taste, we'd recommend heading to the north. And that's exactly what we did on this beautiful Florida morning. If you're enjoying this video so far, let us know by giving it a thumbs up. A bit further north up the island, we were happy to find a little more room to relax and soak up some sun. And if you're feeling a bit more adventurous, you can find plenty of room for some skimboarding too. A quick dip in the gulf was enough adventure for Skylar while I was plenty content relaxing on the beach. You always have to run right in. Would you spend a day on Nokomis Beach? Let us know in the comments. We're out here on Nokomis Beach on a Saturday in the middle of March, and it is a major spring break weekend, so as we expected, it is pretty busy. Thankfully though, we were able to still find a parking spot at around 10 in the morning. And while the beach was incredibly busy at the main public access, we only had to walk about a half mile or so to find this much less busy area. So we wanted to show you the sand here like we normally do. Now this sand is quite a bit different than some of the beaches we've been to recently. It's really quite shelly. So if you have sensitive feet and want to walk along the beach, we'd recommend bringing some good beach shoes. It is hard to leave this beautiful beach, but we gotta get some food. So the place we're wanting to go for lunch is on the north end of the island. But as you can see, it's getting really busy here in the parking lot and we don't want to lose our parking spot, so we're going to take the scooters. Yeah, our scooters are supposed to have a 15 mile range, so we should be okay, but we've never pushed them this far, so hopefully we won't be walking them back. We hopped on our scooters and we're off on our five mile ride to lunch. 
The ride started off smoothly, but we soon found ourselves making a few detours to check out some of the amazing scenery along Casey Key Road. Quick fun fact guys, when we lived in Sarasota and had friends or family visiting, we would come to Casey Key for this drive alone. After a couple more miles drive through Paradise, we arrived at our lunch destination, the Casey Key Fish House. We had to look no further than the appetizer menu to decide on our lunch order, which included the fried calamari and the buffalo shrimp. We found both orders to be delicious and fried to perfection. While I preferred the crispy calamari, Skylar's favorite was the spicy buffalo shrimp. And what better way to cool the burn than with an Arnold Palmer and a local Florida IPA. Casey Key Fish House offers boat access and waterfront dining and opens at 11.30 daily. So we just finished up our late lunch at Casey Key Fish House and we're really glad we decided to make the drive all the way to the north end of the island. We really enjoyed the food, the open air atmosphere, and being on the water. And they also had a tiki bar. Yeah, and we would have loved to spend some time at that tiki bar as well, but by the time we finished our lunch, that place was packed. But we have even more of the island to show you, so let's head back south. Like our ride to the north end of the island, our ride back to the south was not without a few detours. We made it about halfway back down the island, and we had to stop off to show you what the beach looks like around the middle of Casey Key. Now this area is completely residential, so if you don't live here and still want to access this section of the beach, you'll have to either enter at the public access a couple miles down the road or else arrive by boat. I think we're only a mile away, but our scooters are uh, low on battery, so we're going to keep going. All right, guys, we're happy to report that our scooters did get us all the way back to the south end of the island. And we have been out on Casey Key a few times before, but we've never actually made it all the way to the south tip of the island. Until today, and we are here at the North Jetty Beach on the south end of the island, and we'll show you why it's called that in a moment. One of just two public beaches on the entire island, North Jetty Beach is located within North Jetty County Park and further from the island's limited vacation rental properties, such as Casey Key Resort. Due to its location, visitors may find this beach to be less popular among vacationers and more popular among the locals and families with children. After some time taking in the gulf views, we made our way out on the jetty, which we weren't surprised to be a popular spot among the local fishermen. Once at the end of the jetty, we took in some more views of the beach in the passing sailboats. Now, if you're familiar with our channel, you may already know that last week we were over there on South Jetty Beach in Venice. Now, they are on the south side of Casey's Pass. Today, we are on the north side on Casey Key, so that makes this North Jetty Beach. If you're all interested in seeing what there is to do in Venice, we'd recommend checking out that video after this one. And for weekly videos exploring the Florida Gulf Coast, the Caribbean, and beyond, don't forget to subscribe and turn the notifications on. So we made it back to where we started our day here on Nokomis Beach. And to be honest, initially we weren't even sure that there was going to be enough to do on the island to make a video. Yeah, but it turns out that we're not even going to be able to do everything that we wanted to. We're actually going to paddle over to that tiki bar for dinner, but we're just not going to have enough time. Yeah, by the time we're done eating, it's going to be dark, and I am not paddling in the dark. Thankfully, though, our scooters still have a little bit of juice in them, so we're going to see if they can get us there and back. We'll see you over there. Thankfully, the ride to our dinner destination was a short one, and the scooters got us there with a little juice to spare. We arrived at Pop's Sunset Grill, hungry from a long day exploring the island. 
Not surprisingly, we found this spot to be extremely popular on a Saturday at sunset, with nearly a two hour wait for a table for two. But we looked out and quickly spotted a table in the open seating area near one of the several bars on the property. And while this spot did require us to order our food and drinks from the bar, the service was fast and we were happy. We found the menu at Pops to be pretty reasonably priced for a waterfront spot and to be full of great seafood options. We eventually settled on the Salmon BLT and Spicy Tuna Wrap, which both came out within 10 minutes of ordering. To our delight, both the sandwich and wrap were large and contained a good amount of seafood. But as usual, my order was the best, as we both agreed that the Spicy Tuna Wrap and the Edamame Salad edged out the Salmon BLT and Coleslaw. After a fantastic dinner at Pops, we made our way back to Nakoma's Beach where we were happy to catch the end of the Saturday night drum circle. The drum circle takes place around sunset every Wednesday and Saturday night, and all drummers, dancers, musicians, and hula hoopers are welcome. Want to see what Casey Key's neighbors to the north and south have to offer? Then go ahead and click on our Siesta Key or Venice Beach travel guide right now. Thanks for watching.